Hello, this is Dr. Janice R. Love, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is episode 14 of Asking for a Sister Friend, and our guest today is Dr. Shana D. Lewis from Houston, Texas, who is helping those of you who are mental health and wellness experts who are seeing clients one-on-one, -on -one, she's going to help you learn how you can leverage your expertise so that you can have a greater impact and a greater reach. So stay tuned. we have a very special conversation that we are going to have. And of course, this is Asking for a Sister Friend, where we come out here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, where we are simply asking for a sister friend. And tonight, we are going to be talking about how to leverage your mental health genius. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our guest for tonight. Her name is Dr. Shana D. Lewis, and she is the author. She has like three best-selling books, and she is the author of the book some of you may have not ever heard about, but it's called Self-Care is the New Sexy, Taking Care of Yourself Without Guilt and Apology. Now, you know that, that I'm all into that, about making sure that we do not feel guilty about self-care. In fact, I, I peeked on her website. She even has a retreat coming up just um, to help professional women with self-care, executive women. She is a licensed professional counselor, and she is a national certified counselor who has turned into, turned into an executive wellness coach. She is the founder of SDL Enterprises and founder of Her Voice nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering survivors of domestic violence. She is a sought after business coach as well, and that's, that's where we're gonna really hit on tonight. She's a sought after business coach for clinical mental health practitioners who want to scale beyond the therapy room. So you see how this is a, a marriage made in heaven that I am helping you to extend um, your work outside of the, the therapy room. And she is doing helping you to be that professional. Um, so her goal really is to um, to make sure that that others are able to use their expertise in order to do great and wonderful things. She, again, she is a sought after business, business coach and she wants practitioners again to scale beyond that therapy room by increase, increasing their impact, their influence, and even your income. So you want to listen to this. And she is desiring to help thousands across the globe. She's an international keynote speaker. She's done some TED Talks. She's been on NBC, CBS. I mean, she has done lots of things. Has been on Kelly and Ryan. Huh. And again, best time bestseller. But again, I can go on and on about her. But go ahead and welcome to the stage, Dr. Shana D. Lewis. Welcome. Hello, Dr. Love. Thank you for having me tonight. Glad to be here. I am so glad you're here. We have had, I mean, just in the time we've met, and this has been a divine intervention or that, that God even brought us together. Every time we have a conversation, it is just fabulous. And I am just so encouraged by what you are doing because so many times mental health professionals don't realize their genius and the things that they have been doing that they can do so much more and the need is there as well. Yep. So why don't you talk about how you even got to this place in the first place where you are helping um, you're that business coach as well as helping women to have that self-care. That's a loaded question, Dr. Love. Okay. <laughs> so let, let, let's see. Can we give the, the reader's digest version? Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, so we got a long way to go in a short time to get there in. Um, so I've been a clinician for over 20 years. And so really for me, I, I was traditional in the sense of okay. I, I showed up, I had a private practice, I saw clients and in my office, and then the pandemic happened. So mm -hmm. when the pandemic happened, you know, the whole world mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and as therapists, we all went virtual with our clients. And what was happening for me in that time the demand was just so excessively high because everybody needed help. And mm -hmm. so as many of us in private practice we we added hours to our day 
we were seeing eight, nine, 10 clients a day just because the need was so excessive. And it was just a recipe for burnout. It was yeah. just a recipe for burnout. And so part of that is because one, 10 hours of clinical work is way too many. Um, the need was there. We want to help. We want to serve. Um, but it just wasn't sustainable. And so I was getting burnt out and I was in the same pandemic that the folks who I was trying to help were in. So I'm having mm -hmm. my own struggles I'm trying to manage. Right. And so in the midst of all of that, it became very clear to me that my wellness was not what it needed to be. Um, and so I really took some time to slow down um, and pay attention and really create a plan for myself that allowed me mm -hmm. to be what I like to call holy well, W-H-O-L-L-Y. All right. Well. And so when I was in a space of doing that, what I understood initially was I cannot be by myself here. I know if I'm struggling, the helper who's supposed to know what to do. I know right. my people, my sisters are struggling. So, so that's what drove me first into the space of coaching um, to be able to support women on a greater platform. Because women were coming to me on social media from everywhere. And clearly as a therapist, I can't serve you all outside of my licensure. Right. But in a coaching space, I could. So the pandemic really became a gift because it allowed me to shift my thinking about how I was serving. And then I was able to create um, an online Facebook group that really became my first coaching group of a hundred couple hundred women might be three or four hundred women who joined this group and those that is where i first started serving in the space of wellness and it's just grown from there into the business side of helping other therapists do similar kinds of things so were you at a, a, a certain place where you just were you just tired um burnt out where were you when you finally said you know what i gotta do something different <laughs> i was at the point <laughs> love. I was taking naps between sessions because um, I just couldn't sustain the energy. Like I mm -hmm. was I was war um, to the point that I'm hoping it will somebody cancel because I don't have the energy um, to show up and show up well. Um, and I knew that was a disservice to my clients. You know, that's mm -hmm. not they don't they don't deserve that. They deserve right. me to show up fully ready to serve. It, it just was not sustainable. And I realized like there's got to be a different way. And what happened was I went live every day on Facebook during mm -hmm. that 90 days of lockdown when we couldn't leave okay. our homes. So that's when I went live every day, just offering a word of encouragement every day. Right. It may have been two minutes. It may have been 20 minutes, but I showed up every single day for those 90 days. And that's how I got all of this outpouring of women who were like, hey, I mean, please help. Yes. What you're saying is so good. And I was like, you know what? There's a different way to serve. It's it's a different way to serve. And that's what really shifted my mindset of this current program of eight, nine hours straight every day, need to take a nap, getting up, still not being well rested, not feeling well, you know, not sleeping well at night, you know, just all of the things that were happening. It was just, it just, it was not functional. So that's where I was. I was at the bottom. <laughs> when okay. I, was like, I gotta do something different. So you probably had a waiting list and, and, yes. and everybody's just trying to get in. So I really applaud you going live every day. A lot of therapists and, and people in the mental health profession are scared to go live. We're so afraid. So afraid. <laughs> well, you know what, Dr. Love, this is what I understand about us. I've talked to, you know, so many of us over these mm -hmm. years. We are, we, we want, we're, we're afraid because we want to get everything right. Many of us are perfectionists. Mm -hmm. We want to get everything right. And we want to be able to serve people well. And we believe it has to be perfect for us to do that well. When in fact, it's not that at all. People want you to be a real person. Um, so we get very afraid when we can't be perfect. Of my hair isn't right. Or my face isn't right. Or my this isn't right. Like nobody cares. Right. People just want right. real people to show up, honestly. So, yeah, I, I, I felt that in the beginning, but I got over that fairly quickly. Oh, I, I totally understand because I, I finally got to the point where like, I'm looking at myself anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Exactly. Okay. So you began really um, reaching out to those who were in the profession, really just to offer a word of encouragement, really to, in a sense, save yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and encourage somebody else along the way. Mm -hmm. So how did you really do this mind shift to move toward towards coaching versus mm -hmm. counseling? Because in, in the mental health field, we, we're so stuck on licenses, certification, mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. all that stuff. How did you really make that mind shift? 
Ooh, that's a great question because it is a shift of mindset. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. because I mean, I have a PhD in counseling and psychology. So absolutely. I, I believe in the, the institution of education and higher education and all of those things. But when I began to have all of these women show up saying, Hey, Dr. Shana, can you help me? Hey, Dr. Shana, I knew I couldn't help them in the way that I have been trained because it wouldn't have been ethical, right? There's no mm -hmm. way we right. have done that. Um, and so, of course, I've heard of coaching before. I didn't know really what it was. I didn't really mm -hmm. know how different it was from um, therapy or counseling. And so what I decided to do is I went in to, to get a certification for coaching for wellness. I went and got, mm -hmm. got that certification because I wanted to know the differences. I wanted okay. to learn that area and become an expert there as well. And it was um, about 28 weeks, 30 weeks of training. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was, you know, I'm gonna call them practicums, you know, the, the practice right. the different things of learning how to do this. And I absolutely fell in love with coaching, um, because one, it allowed me to no longer operate in the traditional sense of only mm -hmm. being to serve in one way, but it allowed mm -hmm. me to help more women and help them in a way that looks different. Um, mm -hmm. and we can talk more about that if you want to later, but it's a different perspective mm -hmm. to come from when you're serving and when you're helping because the frameworks are different. A lot of it is um, reminiscent of counseling, right? We can mm -hmm. definitely see some of that there, but there's definitely some fundamental differences. So I went and got that training on purpose so that I could then use that to actually show up in a way that was very clear to those that I was serving what I was there to do. Because those women for, were from everywhere. They were, you know, corporate women, executive mm -hmm. women. They were school teachers. They were, they were everybody, every mm -hmm. woman who was in need of some help. So um, that was my methodology in showing up in a space of working to coach versus counsel. So I came the, the other way. I came mm -hmm. from coaching and then went back and got my doctor in Christian counseling. Gotcha. And, and suddenly realized that, okay, <laughs> am I going back here? Uh-huh. 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 Because when you're when you're having to base everything on that that hour session and then you have no shows, and then you know, you can only help one person at a time. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to limit the amount of, of therapy work that I do uh -huh. and counseling that I do and really focus on, on, on coaching. So I, I totally understand how you had to make that mind shift because mm -hmm. doing it the other way was, was almost sound like, what am I doing? You said, what is going on? <laughs> what, is, what am I doing? Getting, mm -hmm. getting paid by the hour, but you know, that's okay because you know, I, the way I saw it was that God led me to do that, that, that counseling. Yeah, um, get that counseling training specifically. And at the time I was beginning to um, to actually coach and counsel pastors wives. So sometimes they needed mm -hmm. that counseling. Sometimes right. they needed right. that um, that coaching. So you're you're going to talk about how um, you can leverage that expertise. So so mm -hmm. what is your vision for for therapists and, and, and counselors mm -hmm. who are in the mental health field? What is your vision? Oh, I love that question. So. We are so brilliant. We are so smart. We have such expertise. We are geniuses. And most of us don't even know it. Mm -hmm. We don't even know it. We went through all of this education, all of this school. We passed all of these tests. You mm -hmm. have to pass national levels of testing in order to get these licensures, these certificates. You they not handing this stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. But we will show up, Dr. Love, with the biggest imposter syndrome that I've ever mm -hmm. seen before in my life of a group of professional people. And I and I say we because I had it, too. I did. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. how, how am I going to show up now saying, oh, I'm coaching now? And, and, and is somebody going to pay for that service? Like, how does that work? Because I didn't know what I didn't know in the beginning, right. of course. Um, and so I see a lot of people who are out here and they're coaching or they're doing other things in the name of helping people, but they don't have credentials. They don't have training. They do not have the expertise that's right. really necessary to mm -hmm. not hurt people, <laughs> right? but right. actually be more helpful. And so in my head, I'm like, why aren't we the ones out here doing this work when we have the expertise and we have the training and we are the genius and we have paid our dues and we are helping people yes. every single day. 
Right. Why aren't we doing this in this other arena? So my dream or vision for us, number one, is to understand that we are experts, number one. We have got to use that language that I am a mental health expert, whether I just got my degree mm-hmm. or I've had it for 20 years. Most of us think we got to have it forever. That's not yeah. true. You get right. your, even if you're in school, you know more about mental health than somebody that went and got a business degree. You can't go to an attorney and ask them, give me the diagnostic criteria for depression. They don't know. (laughs) Exactly. It's not their expertise, but we feel like we have to have been here for a million years before we can be experts. And that the definition of expert means I know everything about everything. Not true. You need to know Mm -hmm. enough about what you know about and what you don't know. You need to be able to figure out or go do some research. We got PhDs. I don't know everything about everything, but I got enough wherewithal that I can go figure some stuff out, ask some questions, do some research to know what I don't know. And and that is so true because you you, have you read um, Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers? No, I've heard it. I need to okay. read it because I've heard that like two or three times. <laughs> okay, well, don't waste your time. Here, here's the, the no, premise. Give, give, yeah, give me the cliff notes. <laughs> I, give, I give you cliff notes. So he has this thing called the 10,000 rule, 10,000 okay. hour rule, Okay. meaning that you have to spend 10,000 hours doing something mm-hmm. in order to become very skilled at your craft, yeah. meaning you're an outlier. You do it better than anybody else. Right. Okay. Right. So he came out with this several years ago. And so when you look at it, that comes out to like 450 something days, right? That days. you would have to be doing it, right? So having an HR background, here's what I figured out, okay? A typical person who works eight hours a day, five days a week, they uh, work 2,080 hours a year, okay? So 10,000 divided by 2080 comes out to about 4.81 years, meaning if you spend 4.81 years in your profession mm-hmm. and you are doing it and you are growing, then you are considered an expert. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. I love it. So I love it. How many, most of the people I know who are in this, in this field have been in their 20, 30 years, I but am. they're afraid to to step out on faith yeah. and, and brand themselves yeah. to be more than just that one-on-one therapist. That and is. so give me give me the first step that that a person has to go through to make that shift, to make that that not that not just the mindset shift, the mindset shift, but also mm-hmm. to really move into that direction. Give give me a tip for for whoever's out there. Oh, uh, so after the, because the mindset is number one. If you ain't got that, then right. nothing else we talk about right. don't matter. But once we figured exactly. out that we can do this, and we're, um, and I'm, I'm not even going to say not afraid. Do it afraid, because mm-hmm. it right. can still exactly. be done, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? It can. Um, it can. It absolutely can be done. But the first thing is, is you got to figure out who do you want to serve beyond the traditional therapy room. So a lot mm-hmm. of clinicians think. Well, if I serve couples in my practice, then the only people I can serve outside of it are going to be couples. It's not true. You could decide Mm -hmm. that you love couples for therapy, but you want to actually work with a different group of people on the outside of a traditional practice. So you really have to get clear first. Who do I want to serve? And it's really at the bottom of the branding component, because if you don't know who you're serving, then we can't build anything because we don't know who we're who, who exactly. is it for. Right. Exactly. Um, so you got to get clear about that. And I've had a lot of clinicians who it's been an extension of. So let's say in therapy, mm-hmm. they work with children and I tell them, OK, that's great in therapy. But on the outside, children don't write checks. They don't have no bank <laughs> accounts. They ain't got no jobs. So it's wonderful for you to help children. But how mm-hmm. else can you help them in a way that is going to be um, beneficial to them and to you at, at the same time? So then mm-hmm. they figure, okay, let me help the parents. Now we're talking. Mm-hmm. Create something for right. the parent that will then support their children, right? So it's really getting clear about who you want to serve. That's the very first thing beyond traditional therapy. It may be similar or the same, but it doesn't have to be. I love it. I've been I've been working on a friend of mine who has been doing therapy for 30 years mm-hmm. and, and he is like exceptional when it comes mm-hmm. to working with couples. And I'm mm-hmm. like, where's your book? Where's where's the seminars that, that you could be doing to even mm-hmm. train other mm-hmm. uh, counselors and coaches mm-hmm. how what you do with couples? Get mm-hmm. your expertise out there. Mm-hmm. So so there there are other things again you can do more so than just one on one. 
Like yep. you've been all over TV, you've been all mm-hmm. over the place sharing your mm-hmm. expertise. Mm-hmm. And so what would you what would you recommend that they um, that they do? First of all, I know you have a coaching program that specifically um, mm-hmm. that helps with that. Tell us a little bit about that coaching program. So so here's the foundation of it. So there's seven different ways um, to mm-hmm. amplify your impact and your income. OK. And so I want you to think about this. Now, people say streams of income. I say rivers mm. and oceans. <laughs> I, 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 I love you. I don't want a stream. Um, I, right. I know that I serve a God that is an abundant God. and He owns all of Amen. the things. And he would want Amen. his children to have oceans, honey. Um, That's and right. Rivers. That's right. Thank you. Um, so that we can go forth and do more of the good right in this mm-hmm. world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the first sets of things that I teach Um, my new clients are the seven different ways, right? Once you create the branding piece of who I'm serving, we got to get crystal clear about that. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the seven ways. You just mentioned a few of those right now, Dr. Love. Um, But speaking is number one. It's top of my Mm -hmm. funnel um, Mm -hmm. because if you're going to actually serve and what I, uh, you use earlier, the one-to-one is what we've been trained Mm -hmm. in, but the one mm-hmm. to many is what I'm right. working to help us flip to um, in okay. our brain. Um, speaking is number one, because there's no other faster way to mm-hmm. affect multiple groups of people at the same time other than speaking. Now, speaking for some like, oh, Dr. Shana, I'm not a speaker. Yeah. I couldn't get up on the stage. You talk all day long in your brain. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All oh, day Okay. And, and maybe it's one person across from you, but that same message can absolutely mm-hmm. be elevated into a space where you are sharing it with a room full of 20 people, 50 people, mm-hmm. 100, mm-hmm. 1,000, whatever the case may be. Same message can sh- absolutely show up in a greater space. And we got to remember, like social media is a platform for speaking. Like right. I'm speaking here. This is speaking right, right now. Right. right? So there's so many ways to do that. So number one is learning how do I become a mental health expert speaker? How do I begin to take my um, vision of who I want to serve, how I want to help them and put it into a speaking platform? That is my number one. So I'm going to give you all seven of them and I'll just say them and then we can come back and unpack them. So speaking is one. Books is number two. You said that about your friend. Mm -hmm. Every therapist needs a book. If you don't have a book, I don't know what we're doing. Because totally. everyone who needs to see you or hear from you is not coming to your office to, to spend time with you for lots mm-hmm. of reasons. They can't. There's a stigma attached to therapy. There's financial reasons, whatever the case. Mm-hmm. But they can afford a $20 book that exactly. gives them some insight. And we mm-hmm. all have it because we're geniuses. Right. So there's all speaking. Right. There's books. Um, there is also what we were saying earlier, coaching programs, another way mm-hmm. of delivering service that is not counseling. So there's coaching. Then there's courses. Now, courses right. are a little different from coaching, but these are pre-recorded things people can listen to and watch on demand. Um, and you're still serving people well in that space because, mm-hmm. you know, the pandemic made that huge where every totally. people are accustomed to doing things online. Um, so you have the speaking, you have the books, you have the coaching, you have the courses, then you have mm-hmm. media. If we're not leveraging media, listen, mm-hmm. the media needs us to substantiate mm-hmm. the news. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody doesn't want to be on, you know, national television, local TV, but media happens other ways. There's um, obviously the TV, but there's also um, magazines, there's radio, um, mm-hmm. there's, you know, even podcasts. This is a form of media as well, too. There's right. lots of ways to do that. Um, another one is products. So depending on whatever your area of expertise is, what products can you leverage to support Mm -hmm. your uh, audience of people? Um, And then the last one for me that I love is events. We can have virtual events, in-person events, because we outside now, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) We way outside at this point. Um, And and it's a great way to support a mass number of people, but also amplify your impact as well as your income. So those are the seven rivers of income (laughs) um, and ways to increase our capacity to go from one to one to one to many that I work with and teach um, clinicians inside of my coaching program. I I love all those because when when you named all those things, that's actually easier than going through licensure and stuff. Amen, isn't it? <laughs> it really yes. is. I mean, if you if you had to go through practicums and all that stuff and, and all of that, I mean, yeah, then you can you can write a book. And again, 
done is better than perfect. Yes. You know? I, and I had to learn that the hard way because as I wrote my books, I was so busy trying to be perfect. It took me a, a while to do them. And yep. then I get mad when I see people out there with these 30 page books, you know, and I uh -huh. had to do a, a 300 page book. Page book, right. <laughs> yep, exactly. So but they can extend beyond, you know, I have met so many people just through either social media mm -hmm. or who have found my book somewhere mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. they contact me. And again, that's the very reason why I do this show asking for a sister friend, because yep. it allows mental health professionals to come on and share their expertise. Yep. And so I, I love that you are actually doing the work to help them. Because mm -hmm. again, I'm on the technology side of it. I have right. moved to the technology side of it, right? right? And right. so I'm simply providing a platform where once you decide you're going to be an expert, mm -hmm. then I have the platform to for you to be able to do all these things. Exactly. You can publish eBooks on my system. You can, mm -hmm. you can actually build courses. You can do mm -hmm. all those things. You can do mm -hmm. social media, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you are, you have the energy and you have that expertise mm -hmm. to show them to how to do it. Yep. Yep. Somebody got to do it. <laughs> Somebody yeah. got to do it. Somebody got to do it. And, and and I think that, that we're just so blessed because you you have that energy and, and, and you're a I can tell you're a teacher at heart because I am. I am. <laughs> you, you, you broke it. You broke it down. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You know, it's got to have points. It's got to be digestible. Listen, <laughs> all of those things. Yes, indeed. I am definitely okay. a teacher at heart for sure. OK, so I, I know that um, you have some free gifts and things, but but. If there was someone out there who has has been in the business and and just really feel like, you know, I think I can do that. Yeah. What what would you suggest they do? <laughs> that you can. <laughs> like truly, it is truly a decision to make. Um, mm -hmm. And when you decide that you can, don't do it alone. Now here's the thing, and I just mm -hmm. made this post the other day, because we are perfectionists, we're overthinkers. Mm -hmm. A lot of us as therapists, mm -hmm. right? We're yeah, we're brilliant, but we can overthink a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We get afraid to invest in ourselves and where we want to go because okay. we're very accustomed to traditional education, right? Traditional mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. is a certain kind of way. So on this side of the house, we were not trained in business as therapists. We were right. not given training on building empires. We were not trained on build. We weren't trained to build brands. We weren't trained to do any of that. And right. unless... You're deciding I'm going to go back to business school and get the uh, MBA. Welcome to do that. But you don't have to. <laughs> right. Exactly. There are other ways of gaining information and do not be afraid to invest in yourself where you want to go. And I, and I say mm -hmm. this, we need a coach and, a, right. and or mentor, whatever language you want to use to show us the framework and the roadmap. Because I tried it on my own in the beginning, Dr. Love. And oh, I, I was, listen, and I was getting a whole bunch of nowhere fast because I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> until I realized, you know what, it's somebody out here got a shortcut for me. Mm -hmm. And I just need to invest in the shortcut and understand that I'm not paying them for a program. I'm investing in myself to use their shortcut roadmap uh -huh. that I can get there faster. That's really the mentality we have to get to. That's the thing that I would tell us. Understand once you decide, yes, that you don't do it alone and you find someone who has a roadmap proven. Now, everybody out here saying a bunch of stuff, vet people. Yeah. Now, vet them. Right. Now, there's a whole lot of folks who aren't true to what they say, but vet. And when you mm -hmm. vet it, do not be afraid to make that step to really get what you need to get there quicker. Cause it doesn't have to take long. My program is 90 days, mm -hmm. and in 90 days. Folks can get a good foundation and begin to launch from that place. I've had folks who've launched books in less than 90 days, um, coaching programs, mm -hmm. um, courses, um, all kinds of things, whole events. I mean, but you got to put your mind to it and get the work done. So yeah. just don't do it by yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So many people are, are, you know, thinking that they can do it by themselves. And the thing is, also, you can't do it by just trying to access all free stuff. You got to nope. invest in yourself. You yep. got to you got to find the right person. And again, you might go through several coaches because yep. each one might focus on a different thing. Like I might have had one that did a little bit better job of marketing, one yep. that that was a little bit better at helping me build my coaching program. So yep. again, you have to you have to vet it. And yep. again, we got you right here. 
I listen, <laughs> always tell folks, I may not be everybody's cup of tea, but if I am <laughs> your flavor, I would love to be a part of your journey. Um, yes. But ultimately, get somebody. Just do not exactly. do this alone. It's just too hard alone. And it you can is. go faster. Because really, Dr. Love, somebody's waiting on you to show up, right? Yeah. Someone yeah. in the greater marketplace is waiting for the solution that you have to the problem that they've been dealing with forever. And so as, you, as we sit back with the angst and the imposter syndrome and the anxiety and the fear of, well, do, can I do this? And can I get this right? While we're sitting on all of this, they're waiting mm -hmm. and they're still exactly. suffering. And we really have an opportunity to show up and serve and serve powerfully. Yeah. And I, it took me a while to get to that point because fear would override uh, yeah. again the the fact that that I didn't just make this on my own. This was a need that was out there. Exactly. And so that that's where God placed me. And I yep. had to go ahead and step out on faith. And it's like. Yep. You know, again, and 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 understanding that you're not everybody's cup of tea yep. is God will send you the ones that that He needs you to help, and so definitely. So let let me let me share some information. So tell me about this um this challenge you have going. You have yes. Yes, thank you for that. So I, I'm hosting next week a three day challenge. And so this is the brand um, mastery challenge for three days. Um, it's one hour each day. You can pop in. It's completely free. You can come into this challenge and I'm going to what I said today. I'm going to break that down even further during this challenge. Uh, okay. Because my objective is to help clinicians build what I like to call a bankable brand, okay? Mm -hmm. A brand that is bankable, not only bankable in cash, but bankable in the impact and influence you can make in people's lives. Things that they can take to the bank that are going to actually change their life. They're going to help them to show up more powerful, show up um, better in their worlds, whatever your area of expertise might be. So this three days will deep dive into that space. And when you walk away, you're going to have greater clarity about the brand that you really want to build. And mind you, when we're saying, I said earlier, those seven different rivers, streams, oceans of income, mm -hmm. I'm not saying build seven different brands. I'm saying build right. one brand, but you manifest it in the marketplace seven different ways. Same, you, you, you remember that, what was that movie? Um, it was about a band. It was one band, one sound, right? Like, okay. but the, the band is made of many different people, but they're all making the same sound. This is the same idea here. There's one sound, there's one brand, but there's many arms to it, but it's all going back and they're saying the same thing, but in different ways. Cause you'll have some people that'll never read a book but they will love mm -hmm. to come see you on a podcast. You have some exactly. folks that never listen to a podcast, but they are avid readers. You have some folks that they want to go to an event. People are going to intersect with you different places. So having options within mm -hmm. your brand allows you to have greater impact. Wonderful, so that's what wonderful. this challenge is about. Y'all better come on, click those links, <laughs> put that in y'all's, uh, join me. That challenge is going to be awesome. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, and you have you. There's another free gift that, that you have, right? You, you got all kinds of stuff. I just got gifts tonight, Dr. Love. <laughs> I'm all about the giving. So this one is um really okay. So this is the the premise behind this free gift. Okay. I know as clinicians, especially those of us, if you're in this space already, or if you're thinking about it, one of the things we will often say is, I don't have time for that. I don't have mm -hmm. time for that. I'm doing too much. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, I, I, I see you and I hear you. I know we are excessively booked if we got eight clients a day, this and that. Mm -hmm. So this free gift is actually an opportunity for you to truly track your time because mm -hmm. most of us are wasting time and we're doing things that number one are not income generating. They are not mm -hmm. impact heavy. They're not. It's just not. And so you can't say for sure that you don't have time until you are clear about how you're using your time currently. So Ooh. this free gift is a time log for you to actually actually document over seven days. How are you spending your time? Are you doing things that are generating income and impact? Or are you wasting it? Because we waste a lot of time. And I don't want that to be an excuse while we don't do the things that we're talking about here tonight and leveraging our genius for sure. I love it. I love it. So definitely if you are interested in this, I'm going to try to put this in the chat box so that yeah. we can definitely um, comment. Look, girl, I got to figure out how to work stuff sometimes. 
<laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. So there's the free gift. And then I'm going to go back and add the, um, the challenge. Uh, yes. The challenge. All right. I'm, I can yeah. work this thing, girl. Okay. Listen, so, technology is our friend tonight, Dr. Love. We here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, share. Um, so as as we get ready to close, I hate even closing because we we we're having such we a good conversation. We could be here all night long. We could, girl. Be. I already know. I already know. <laughs> and um, uh, I have a therapist who is on here now who is talking about, "Ooh, this is good information." Because I, I know she's that. got all kinds of skill sets, and she is ready to to show the world Leverage what yes. she can do. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so um, what would what what would be your final parting um, uh, remarks for someone who who needs to make this move? So I want you to think about it like this. Here's another one of our mind blocks as therapists, because we said we got into this field and it wasn't about money. (laughs) And we got out here because we wanted to help people. Um, Mm -hmm. And when we think about, you know, making a building a bankable brand, we think about it's about Mm -hmm. money and it's somehow we feel icky when and we have a hard time yeah you know what i mean we have a hard time talking about money anyway um as therapists as a profession um and so what what i want you to understand here it's not about the money at all i want you to think about this we came into this field most of us who showed up we really showed up Mm -hmm. with the heart to help and to serve we did Um, Mm -hmm. And we showed up with that heart to help and to serve. But I want you to understand that when you leverage your genius, your capacities to help and serve will 10x of what Mm -hmm. you're doing right now. And it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean you got to kill yourself to do it when you have a framework of which to drop your genius into that allows you to 10x the impact that you have. When your impact increases, and I want you to understand impact is the number of people that you touch. So my impact Mm. in a one-on-one session is I impacted one person in that one hour. But when I show up here, I get to impact how many folks show up into this space. When I get on a stage, I can impact thousands of people at a time. When I get on television, I can impact millions at a Mm -hmm. time, right? So my impact can increase. When your impact increases, your influence will increase. What is your influence? Your influence is how you are able to help people make choices and decisions and make moves. So whatever you're showing up with in that impact, in that message, in that brand, the problem you're solving, now you're influencing them to think a different way because now you've been able to get in front of Mm -hmm. more people. But that influence grows, right? And automatically, Dr. Love, when your impact increases and your influence increases, your income is going to increase. That's true. That's true. So it's not about the money. It's about the impact and the influence and the income will come. And when we create more in revenue, we're able Mm -hmm. to do more good in this world. We're able to show up and serve places for no dollars because I don't have to worry about making money because I've already made enough over here that I can truly serve in a different way. I hope that makes sense. And not just for outside, but your own family. It it makes so much sense. Don't we sacrifice our own families to help other people all the time? Amen. All the time. All the time. Not on my watch. You're not going to (laughs) say you did it and you didn't have an alternative. Because under my watch, I definitely want to encourage us, increase our impact, our influence. And absolutely, we got the same right as every other profession to show up and increase our income. So I will leave that there. Let's say I will land my plane. Look, look, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to say amen because you have said a word. Yes, sure. yes You have yes. said a word. I, 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 I just love what you're doing. And I, I just love the divine in, uh, connection that we've yeah. made. And I look forward to as you continue to coach women and they begin to build these course platforms and they would just come right on over yes. and check out um, yes. my client learning portal. Yes. Um, so in, in case you don't know anything about my client learning portal, go to clientlearningportal.com and check it out and see the things that I am doing. OK, so I'm going to figure out how to shut this down. <laughs> but, um, you know, every time I, I come on and I have a conversation, I, um, I leave with the scripture, Proverbs 27 and 17, the Good News Translation, which says people learn from one another just as iron sharpens iron. And you have sharpened up all my iron tonight. And I am I am so blessed that you were here for the show. Um, yes, I had my, my counselor that I'm going to be working on uh, that that definitely needs to be have a conversation with you is she she actually went back and said impact increases your influence 
increase. I love it. She said, yes, 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 yes. I love it. Yes. I yes. love it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and shut this down. But thank you so, so very much for, for being my guest today. I am, uh, again, I've just been blessed by your presence. I have learned a lot of things. And I, I've been coaching and counseling for, for several years, but I have learned some things and definitely feel more confident that, mm -hmm. you know, we have that expertise. And, and we want, especially women who have been toiling in this field, mm -hmm. working um, patient by patient, one on one, mm -hmm. who has developed all of this expertise to know that, that God desires more of her. God yes. desires for her to more re reach more people and to yeah. reap all the stuff that she has sown. Hello. 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 So, so again, Amen. I'm excited. Girl, I'm going to have to have you back for part two one of these days. Okay. Oh, there's so much more to be said. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So we, I'm going to have to have you for back for part two. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But thank you all those who made comments and thank you all who, who came out today. Once again, we were here talking about how to leverage your mental health genius. Once again, I am Dr. Janice R. Love, uh, the founder and CEO of Pearls Perfecta Institute, where we are transforming mental health and wellness professionals into experts with user-friendly technology that keeps clients learning well beyond the session. Hello, this is Dr. Janice R. Love, and would you like to be my special guest on Asking for a Sister Friend? Then I invite you to visit pearlsperfectedinstitute.com and visit the about page. We'd love to see how you can help a sister friend.